What's up class and welcome back to another lesson in the Nomad Shop class here on the School Zone. Okay, time for one of the hallmarks of the double black diamond lessons besides logic gates and that is manufacturing. Manufacturing became available with the Contraptions Workshop DLC and today I'll be giving you a basic introduction to what it's all about. Then in the next video I'll give you something exceptionally cool you can do with manufacturing. A practical application kind of like you did with the logic gates and the two-way power door here at my Abernathy Studios. <laughs> Since I have lots of room to build here in this courtyard of sorts, we'll build our first manufacturing assembly here. Now I know some of you are like, where are all your other settlements, Paul? You only build it like three or four places. Well, truth be told, I've only built it about half of all the available settlements in the game. I don't like to just build it settlements just to fill up space, you know? I like to have a theme in mind. So, if I don't have a theme in mind for a settlement, I save it until an idea grabs me, which also ensures I have time to make these videos too. But I do have about five settlements in the works that I can't wait to show you guys. I've been working on them bit by bit, and I don't want to do a reveal yet until they're fully complete. They are truly aces, so stay tuned for those. Also, while we're here, I went ahead and swapped out the XNOR gate for the XOR gate, you know, for my uh, two-way powered door video. My idea of immersion role-playing with the gate, unable to be open from the outside if I'm already on the inside, kind of confused some people. With the XOR gate, however, you can basically open it from either side at any time. I put a pop-up note in that video explaining that, but sometimes viewers don't read those, and I realized I was just getting a bit too fancy for a basic practical application. So, as you can see now, it opens from either side, no matter which switch is on or off on the other side. And since settlers and NPCs can't use switches, you know, other than the siren, might as well keep it simple for everyone. Okay, so let's get down and dirty with some manufacturing. What I'll do first is show you the parts available and then we'll make a super simple design. Right off the bat, let me say this. If you haven't messed around with manufacturing yet because it was kind of intimidating, don't worry, you're in good company. A lot of Fallout 4 players feel that way. I didn't even mess around with manufacturing until almost a year after it came out. You know, it just seemed overly complicated without a whole lot of gains other than, you know, just to say, hey, I built a factory. And you aren't really able to manufacture much that couldn't just be bought from vendors or found in the environment. As you've seen from my build tour so far, I've been able to decorate with clean food items that I've just found in the environment. And since my character is a stealthy sniper build, I almost never run out of ammo. So I was hard pressed to think of things I needed to make even out of convenience. Also, very few man manufactured items will offer you a profit over and above what you need to spend on the raw materials. You're still better off water farming for caps using the industrial water purifiers if you want to go the profiteering route. Now having said that though, I am actually going to show you an ingenious way of getting filthy rich off manufacturing in the next video. Completely fairly with no mods of course. So be sure to stay tuned for that next video. But generally speaking, manufacturing is really more of a matter of convenience and fun rather than a necessary building element in the game. Okay, it's getting a little cloudy out. So I am going to fire off a clear weather shell, which is what we are going to be building today. <laughs> All right, so let me pop one of these in here. Nice. So before we get to building that, let me uh, introduce you to some of the parts in manufacturing. So we're going to go into the power section, down to manufacturing. And you've got these divided into three sections, conveyor belts, machinery, and miscellaneous. But what they really should have done is divide it into the four parts that you need to complete an assembly. And that is a starting point, conveyors, builders, and ending points, okay? Or a starting point, a conveyor, a builder, and an ending point, all right? So that's an easy breakdown of the parts you'll need to build something, okay? So let's start off with the starting point. Okay, so there's a few starting points that you can use, but the most common one is gonna be in the miscellaneous section, and it's this item right here called the vacuum hopper. And what this is gonna do, as it says up there, it's gonna pull items out of an adjacent container when powered, and it's gonna send them down the assembly line. So you basically power on this vacuum hopper and then any items that are in an adjacent container will be pulled out of the container automatically and then sent down the assembly line. The other option is just to drop them you know, onto an assembly line. But this is a more automated way to do it and one we're gonna be using today. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna use as my starting point. And then you have these various types of conveyor belts 
You have ones that have supports. You have ones that don't have supports and they will snap to items that already have supports, for example. You have turns, you have branches, rollers, curves. We won't get into these diverters today because those are a little more complex, but you have conveyors that'll lift things up to higher levels at various angles. And you have tripwires, which we also won't get into today, okay? So that covers the starting point and the conveyors. Next comes the builders, or as they call it, machinery, okay? So you have to decide what you wanna build in your factory. So you have a whole bunch of options here, all right? You have a builder, which is gonna build various junk items, armor, weapons, clothing, they call it the auto loom, energy weapons, heavy weapons, ammunition, explosives, pyrotechnics, and food. Okay, so the one we're gonna be using to build the clear weather shells is this pyrotechnic mill. And then you need a place to store it, okay? Or an end point, as I called it earlier. And there are a couple of different ones. Uh, you have this conveyor storage, so the items will roll down the conveyor and end up in this little storage container, which you can walk up to like a workshop and just pull the items out. And then you have this hopper. So this is a big bulky item, but we're gonna go ahead and use it today and you'll see why in a moment. Uh, this isn't an item I'd normally use, but because of uh, the configuration of what I'm going to do today, it'll give me an opportunity to show you how it's used. Now, most of what can be manufactured isn't really necessary, but, you know, like I said, there is one thing I find myself needing to make fairly often that I can't buy at vendors, and that is the clear weather shells for the firework mortar. So, instead of busting out a chemistry station and going into crafting mode every time I run out, like I just ran out a second ago, then why not automate the process? I mean, we like those nice sunny days for settlement building, right? So it seems like as good a thing as any to incorporate into our little assembly today. So let's talk a little bit about this vacuum hopper. So I'm going to go ahead and build it right here because we're going to use it. And the way this works is that any container that you place in front of this vacuum hopper is going to allow this vacuum hopper to pull the junk items or the scrap or the materials or whatever that's in it into this little hood here and through the storage area and out on this conveyor, okay? Now it does need to be powered. Some of the items don't need to be powered as long as they're attached to other items that are powered, okay? Now, the way this hood works is that, let me just straighten this out so I can kind of give you an example here. So the way this works is, is that it will only pull items out of containers. And when I say containers, I specifically mean the containers in the furniture section that are labeled containers. So any of these items right here will work. Now it's not gonna work for all items that you can store things in, only items that are labeled containers under the furniture section. So for example, it's not gonna work with this uh, trash bin right here, even though I can technically store items in this trash bin because the trash bin is from the miscellaneous section and not from the container section. Now I may be wrong and the vacuum hopper may be able to pull some items out of other types of containers that aren't listed under the container section. But if you find yourself frustrated that it's not pulling something out of a container, then just check and make sure that you actually used something from this container section. So I want to put this vacuum hopper up against this uh, trash bin and pull the items out of this trash bin. But like I said a second ago, it's not going to pull the items out of the trash can. But we're going to get a little creative and we're going to make it look like it is, okay? So I'm going to try to get this vacuum hopper right up to this uh, trash bin as best I can. Actually, that's not too bad. Let me see if I can get a little closer. Sweet. Now, I don't really need to get too close. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and just slide it back so it's even with this one line right here. I wish I could push it a little farther against the wall, but I can't because it's got kind of a large bounding box. <laughs> I could pillar glitch it closer to the wall, but you can't rug glitch these because they snap. So what is the radius or what is the range of this vacuum hopper? Well, after some testing, I found out that it can reach objects as far away as one square tile from this closest uh, support post right here. Okay, you see the one I'm pointing at right here? So it's got four of these posts, 
the one that's closest to this uh, hood here, will extend the range for one square tile, one full square tile out. So as a reference point, you see this white line right here. It's the second white line of this uh, wooden grid. So it can pull items up to a range of one slat beyond this second white line here, okay? So it can pull items as far away as where I'm standing right now. So that kind of gives you a sense of how far it's gonna be able to pull the items out. Now the items won't actually fly through the air into the vacuum hopper. They're sort of magically transported <laughs> into the storage area of the vacuum hoppers conveyor storage there. But what I wanna do is make it look like I can put uh, junk in this trash bin and it's gonna pull the items out of this vacuum hopper into our assembly. So how can I do that? Well, there is one item in the container section that kind of looks a little bit like the color of the trash bin. And that is this trunk, this steamer trunk right here. So what we're gonna do is actually rug glitch this steamer trunk into the trash bin, and then I'll be able to put items into the steamer trunk and make it look like they're kind of being pulled out of the trash bin, all right? Gotta get a little creative sometimes there. Okay, so since I have seven of these mats, or actually, you know what? I have a better idea. So uh, we're gonna use this rug right here, and just to make sure it doesn't drop down too far, I'm gonna put one rug down and then just stack two more rugs right there, all right? That way it'll give us two chances for it not to drop down too far, okay? And then I'm just gonna rug glitch this right into place. Now you don't wanna go in too far because you need to reach the steamer trunk to put the junk items in there. But uh, let's see if we can get it. All right, and I'm just gonna get it so where it's barely visible. Like that. Okay, let me see if I can reach the steamer trunk. Perfect. See that right there? That's where I would put the junk items, okay? So let's see if my theory is correct. If I pull out these rugs, whether it'll stay kind of right where it is. Drops down and then it drops back up again. Perfect. And that's just because the wire mesh of the uh, trash bin is gonna recatch the steamer trunk and kind of pull it back up into place, okay? So there's another little insider tip and trick for you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and store this rug. And now any junk items that we place in this steamer trunk will get vacuum hopped out of what looks like the trash bin. In fact, if I walked up to this trash bin and I didn't know that that was a steamer trunk, it might look like it was actually part of that object. So, you know, just a little creative way to make it look nice. Okay, now let's go back in and take a look at the uh, item that we want to build next. And that is this pyrotechnics mill. But as you can see, it's not gonna snap on the end because it's sitting in the wall there. So we need a way to get the items out of this pyrotechnics mill from the way that I've decided to orient this. And let's take a look at the conveyor belts. Let's take a look at this one right here. Now, this item is also not gonna snap into place because it's bumping up against that wall. So, I have two choices. Move this vacuum hopper so there's room, or we can get a little creative, all right? And this will give me the opportunity to show you another piece in the manufacturing here, and that is these conveyor lifts. So we're gonna go up and around just to make this work. Plus, it's giving me an opportunity to show you more parts in the manufacturing. Okay, so why don't we go, let's see here. Something like this, all right? Now, should snap into place here because, yep, there we go. Now there's two types of these conveyor lifts, the types that have supports on the bottom and the type that don't. So let's see here. Okay, so I can use this one or I can use this one. Now, I think the reason I'm not gonna use this one is because it's gonna be hanging a little bit over the edge and I don't want the items to fall off. So let's go ahead and use this one right here. Now, even though it's clipping into the wall, it's still gonna carry the items up. Okay, and then the other thing I'm gonna do, just so we can start to see what's going on here, is I'm gonna add some stairs. So let's take a look at what this is doing right here. So it will be coming out of the vacuum hopper across this tiny bit of conveyor, getting lifted up to here, and then falling right out over here. So what we're gonna wanna do is, uh, we're gonna wanna add a conveyor, but we might as well 
add the pyrotechnics mill so we can kind of get a sense of spacing here. Okay, so I want the items to fall right onto the pyrotechnics mill just about in the center there, okay? So I think I've got it lined up with the third slat from the right. So I'm gonna push this forward now to about right there. Okay, cool. Got a sense of that. And then I'm gonna go back to the conveyor belt and let's see if there's a tiny conveyor belt that I can just add. That should be good enough. If I need to extend it out a bit further, we will, but this is gonna be rolling, so I don't think anything's gonna fall off of this side. It's gonna hit the uh, conveyor and instantly get pushed in a forward direction. Let's see here. Okay, the item is gonna be coming out of the pyrotechnic mill and we need a way to drop it back down again, okay? So let's add another bit of conveyor. <laughs> let's see here. Okay, did you notice how it wouldn't snap from this direction, but it would snap from this direction? That's how you know the conveyor is rolling in the correct direction. Okay, so the junk is now gonna be coming up this conveyor lift Falling onto this conveyor, getting rolled into the pyrotechnics mill, and then the clear weather shells will be pumped out this side, and then we want a way to take it back down again. Okay, so let's grab another conveyor. Now, just a quick note, we have these curved rollers right here, which would be good. We can just have them roll along and then down a ramp or something, but these rollers themselves aren't actually powered. So they don't roll by themselves. They only move objects forward through the momentum of the objects behind it. So a lot of times objects will get stuck on these rollers. So I don't usually like to use them. I mean, maybe the ramped ones will be good because gravity can kind of do the work there. So we're gonna go ahead and use another powered conveyor. And I think, let's see here. Yeah, this one ought to work. Let's see, I'm wondering if I even need that middle part there. This one right here. I'll leave it in for now. Now we need something for the items to drop into, okay? And you know what I think I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna go rest until it's a sunny day again, and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, I am back. So here's what I think I'm gonna do, actually. I'm gonna remove this part slide this over to here, and then we're going to repurpose that little piece right here. Actually, you know what? Never mind. I'm going to get out one of these. There we go. Okay, and then let's see if we can fit a hopper in there. All right, perfect. Okay, so what's going to happen is the items are going to roll off this conveyor storage into the hopper, and then they're just going to drop down into this little box. All right, so it's time to power this thing now. First of all, we're going to need a lot more power than the smaller generators, and that is why they probably made these fusion reactors. Okay, so I'm going to just put this right here for now. And we're going to hook that up to the vacuum hopper. We're going to hook that up to... I have to move it over just a bit more. Okay, the next step is to program our pyrotechnics mill for the type of shells we want to create. And you do that through a terminal. Okay, so let's just hook the terminal up. Now, I could hook it right up to the pyrotechnics mill, but since that's attached to this uh, vacuum hopper and also the generator, I can attach any one of them because they're all part of the same electrical grid. Okay, so let me hop on the terminal and tell it which one to... Oh, and by the way, since I accidentally went into this area, I'll just show you real quick. You can set the uh, output timer and the output force for the vacuum hopper. Now, I would just leave it as the default, but you know, if you have items that are clogging, you can slow them down. If you have small items and you wanna make the thing move much faster, you can set it a little higher. You know, same with the output timer. I'm just gonna leave those as the default for now. Go into the pyrotechnics mill. Head down here to the clear weather shell and set that up so that it's going to start producing clear weather shells. Now it's telling me the required components are one adhesive, one cloth, one fertilizer, and one gold. Okay, so those are the items I need to add to the steamer trunk to be pulled out by the vacuum hopper and sent up the assembly. Okay, so we will get those items 
And by the way, you can, if you want to now, get rid of this terminal now that it's been programmed to that one. Might as well save the frames. <laughs> Hashtag save the frames. All right, so let's see if our little assembly works. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to clean this whole thing up. Okay, so I've got some items in here I can pull out. Duct tape is going to have cloth and adhesive. Uh, let's see here. Gold flip lighter, gold watch. And then just for the sake of it, I'm going to throw some tin cans in there because they're not used in this process. And you'll see what happens to those. And then we need some fertilizer. So I'm going to run over to my workshop. And since we have our lovely Brahmin hanging out here producing uh, manure, <laughs> we can just pull out some of the abundant fertilizer in the junk section. Now, while I'm here at the workshop, I might as well let you know that you can also hook the vacuum hopper up to this workshop and it'll pull the junk out of the workshop. I don't recommend that because it's a little bit overkill. You know, it's going to pull everything that's a component out of your workshop that can be crafted into uh, items, you know, all the junk and stuff. And if you have supply lines set up to uh, other settlements, it's also going to do weird things like pull some junk from other settlements. You know, not all the time, but it is going to pull aid items, you know, like food and water and things like that. So unless you have an isolated settlement that's not set up with supply lines and you don't have anything in your workshop except for junk, that would be a rare case where it might actually be more convenient to uh, use the workshop as a container. But otherwise, the only other containers are those labeled containers. So let's add these items to our labeled container which is this steamer trunk and let's see if we've got this thing set up just right now a few of these items will be redundant but we'll, i'll show you what happens when it works okay so item gets pulled see there we go okay now it should be heading up this assembly line here perfect Hasn't gotten the gold yet. But I'm gonna run over here and just show you that they're not really falling off. You know, we got plenty of room there. I don't need to add any walls over here, especially since I haven't set the uh, output timer down. Okay, we've got enough components now, so it's starting to press the uh, pyrotechnics mill. And you can see now a couple of them are starting to come out. There we go. Isn't that sweet? In fact, I need to use one right now. Still cranking them out. And then it's going to automatically stop when it doesn't have any more components to create the pyrotechnic. Okay. So now what it is, is it's storing all the items it hasn't used yet. Now, some of these items can still be used like the uh, Wonder Glue can still be used if I add enough more components to create the power technique. But all these other items will stay in there because they're not going to be currently used to create those uh, clear weather shells. And they'll just stay in here until you pull them out. Okay, so they've all dropped down into this hopper and this hopper now is storing three clear weather shells and I can take those. Go ahead and <laughs> use a necessary one right now. Perfect. Okay, so that is a very, very simple setup for manufacturing. So I explained how you need a storage container, which we're using the steamer trunk. I got a little creative with that, but you know, you can put this steamer trunk just out here without the trash bin. You need the vacuum hopper to pull the items out of the steamer trunk, and you need some kind of conveyor to take it over to the builder item, which in this case is a pyrotechnics mill. Now I went up and over <laughs> this thing just to show you some extra parts, but you could just have this uh, pyrotechnics mill attached directly to this conveyor. And then I was able to show you how changing directions on the conveyor works and then how it drops into a storage item. Now, at the end of this, I could have also used, instead of the hopper, I could have used this uh, conveyor storage right here. 
uh, look, it's even going to fit on top of the hopper. But, you know, because I have to come back down again, uh, the hopper was a good choice in this case. All right. I wouldn't normally use some other builds because it is kind of bulky, but it does have its uses, especially if you're dropping things from like a second or third floor. It will catch those. And then it has an extra bonus benefit where if you power it, then this thing actually opens up and drops the items back out again. So that is the basics. And also, of course, you need a large amount of power and you need a terminal to tell the builder which item in specific you want to create. Now, if you've watched other videos and you've seen these massive factories that just have conveyors running everywhere and it's just been sort of boggling to the mind. The reason they're doing that is because they don't want to have to reprogram the builders for each item every time they want it. They just have each builder set to a certain thing and then they don't have to go back and reprogram it, you know? And also they're kind of flexing a little bit and showing you uh, this massive factory build. But the way I would probably do it is have each settlement have just a small assembly line and then I can just visit that settlement when I wanted those particular items. Like for example, I'll come collect all my clear weather shells from Abernathy Farm and I might have another settlement that I go to visit to collect all my ammo. You know, I haven't found a need to build armor. I can get better armor from vendors, but you know, you get the idea. So those massive factories are just kind of showing you how everything can be automated. So I didn't want to do anything like that and kind of confuse you guys and overwhelm you. But this is an example of just a very, very simple build. So what I'm going to do from here is clean up the wiring. But I wanted to give the people that have short attention spans an out here, because if I had done the clean wiring before I showed you this assembly here, then some people, you know, they get a little frustrated. So for those of you who want to see me make Make this absolutely uh, seamless and look like there's no wiring in very creative ways and come up with a really cool little mechanism to catch uh, the items that drop out of here as well as a really clever way to open up the hopper then stick around and we're going to go into uh, you know I guess we call it part two of this video but I didn't want to make a separate video just to clean up the wiring because that's kind of a waste of a video I like each video to be topical so to speak so what we're going to do now is we're going to get really creative and these are going to be some good tips also that you can learn for just you know cleaning up wires in general all right and creative ways to do that. You know, a lot of people in past videos have asked me how I do all the trick wiring and hide all the wires. So this is an opportunity for me to cue this video, you know, at least the second half for those people who ask those future comments. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, just quick save so I don't lose anything we've done here. And I'm going to head back in and disconnect these wires. Okay. And then we want a switch to turn this on. We don't want this to be powered all the time. So let's go ahead and get out a switch. And we're just gonna set it against this wall right here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bury this generator under the crawl space, okay? So we don't even have to see the generator. So I'm gonna go ahead and store this shack floor right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and store this one right here. Let me just make sure with that hopper I can pop these back into place because that looks a little sketchy. Yes. Perfect, okay. So no worries there. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and, let's see here. Yep, I'm gonna go ahead and store, oh, that generator's in the way. Oh, interesting. I've got a little piece of a rug sticking out right there. Let me go ahead and remove that. <laughs> that was for that lamp post. Hopefully it won't drop down too far. Perfect. Okay, so let me see if I can pop this back into place. There we go. Okay, great. So I'm just going to set that over there. And then I'm going to get out a little ladder. Actually, we can just repurpose this ladder right here. For the time being. Okay, now we are going to get super creative here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this shack foundation block. Actually, I don't even know if I need to remove that one, but I want to remove this one. Let me see if I can pop this back into place. Yes, I can. Okay, so I'm going to set that over here. 
And then we're going to take this fusion generator and I'm going to set this down right here. And let's see here. I may not even need to glitch this into the ground. Ah, you know what? I am going to move this block. I'm going to set that block right over there. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this fusion generator right over here. And this way... Yeah, that is pretty cool. My theory is correct. I should be able to pop this block right back over it. Yeah, isn't that cool? So I won't do that just yet. But uh, that is the idea. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, let's start creating some wires and some conduits. Okay? So thanks for sticking around. This is going to be worth it. You guys are going to learn a few things here. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, let's get out a... get out one of these barn shack floors and I'm just going to set that right here so that we have a flat surface to add some rugs and things like that. And I'm going to get out a bunch of rugs here. And we're going to put the conduits on the rugs. Okay, so I'm going to start off here with one, two, three and let's do another set this time i'm gonna do four one two three four and then one two bushes are in the way sorry about that three Huh. Wonder why I can't add one onto the end there. Let me slide these over just a little bit. Oh, that's why, because they're attached like that. There we go. Now it should work. Okay, now I'm going to set down some conduits. Okay. So, first of all, I'm not going to get rid of this generator right here because I don't feel like rewiring everything, but we might as well get it part of the grid. So... I'm going to go ahead and just straight up hook this generator over to this. I may have to use the wire glitch. Yep, because it's going underground a little bit. Okay, so those are connected at least. Now we have 115 power. Okay, now this will be some complicated wiring here, so follow my logic here. Hopefully that isn't counterproductive to my very simple explanation for the manufacturing. Once again, this is like the extra credit after the main lesson, all right? So what we want to do now is hook up that switch uh, so that when we turn the switch on, it'll turn on the vacuum hopper and the pyrotechnics mill. We don't want it to turn on the drop hopper right here. That's going to be hooked up to a separate uh, switch assembly. Let's see here. We want power to go to the switch but we don't want it to be seen. We want it to be going through the walls. So that is where we're gonna use this power conduit, all right? So this power conduit right here, and this one is going to go to the generator and up to the switch. Okay. So now I can push this inside here. And now we don't see any of the wires going up to the switch. Now we want the switch to go to 
the vacuum hopper as well as the pyrotechnics mill, but we also don't want to see the wires. So we are going to add a conduit right underneath the vacuum hopper. We'll say about right there. Yeah, that should be good. And we are going to use, let's see here. This one. Okay, so this is going to go up to the switch now. And it's going to go, well, it's actually coming down from the switch. <laughs> and it's going to go, first of all, over to this little conduit right here. Uh, which then is going to, let me wire glitch this up to the vacuum hopper. Let's see if I have that straight. I can straighten that out a little bit more. Let's just move that over a little bit more. Oh yeah, can't do it because it's wired. <laughs> May have gone over a little too far, but uh, yeah, I did go over a little too far. Fix that a bit. Okay, so far so good. All right, I'm going to rest again until we have daylight and I'll be right back. <laughs> Too funny, those Brahmin, man. <laughs> they just love to go everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So where we left off, we had power, going down to that conduit, up to the switch, back down to this conduit, over to that conduit so we can go straight up underneath the vacuum hopper. And then also it's gonna go up to the pyrotechnics mill. And we're gonna use the wire glitch again and connect that to the pyrotechnics mill. All right, sweet. Now what I can do is I can grab, what are you doing over here? Out of my way, provisioner. <laughs> okay, so now I can grab this rug and we can slide this way into place. Actually, I'm gonna reverse these. I'm gonna move this one over to here. And move this one over here. This way we can get right... What are you doing? Oh, he's looking for a way out. Jeez. <laughs> Alright, go on. <laughs> Your radical exit there. No, don't. <laughs> Take the Brahmin with you. Take the Brahmin with you. Oh, Lord. That is too funny. All right, so now I can set this uh, conduit up over here where hopefully it'll be going straight up underneath. Uh, I can probably even move it over a little more. How about that? Fascinating, fascinating. Okay, so just to double check that. Yeah, that's gonna look nice. Uh, let me uh, hop up here. And just double check that it's kind of straight up and down. Sweet! And you see that wire in there? That's not going to affect the uh, items going into it all. In fact, I can even push it over a fraction more. So let's do that. Awesome, awesome. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to do is set up a switch for this hopper. Okay, which is going to be on a different assembly here actually you know what so before we set up the uh, switch for the hopper let me make sure that this switch is working oh sweet okay so that turned off that assembly and that turned off that switch it on that's moving now. Those are moving now. And I can see that one over there is moving as well. Okay, we're all set. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this switch off.
Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is set up a little switch for this hopper. And I think I'm gonna get a little creative and have it be a pressure plate, okay? You don't see those used too often. So let's get out the switches. Let's get out a pressure plate. I'm gonna set that right up against this, the leg of this hopper, right about there. Yeah, is that as close as I can get to it? Try to straighten it out at least. Okay, that looks good. All right, and once again, we are gonna hide the wires to the pressure plate. So let's go ahead and, uh, actually, I don't think I need all of those. So let's do it like this. Let's set this rug right here and just put another conduit on it. Like that. And the reason I'm putting the conduits on the rugs, in case you haven't seen my wire glitch video, is because I can move the rugs even after the conduits are hooked up to the hopper. So what I need now is another set. I can just probably store this rug, use this rug, set that right here, get rid of this floor, and just set two more conduits right here. Okay, so here's what we want. We want power to go into the pressure plate and then the power out of the pressure plate to go up to hopper. But to hide the wires, we've added these two extra conduits. Okay, so power is gonna go into this conduit right there, over to this conduit right here, and then from here up to, oh, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. My bad. <laughs> it's gonna go from here up to the pressure plate and then it's going to come down from the pressure plate to this conduit and over to this conduit i don't even know if i need that conduit right there so let's just set it right there and then i'm going to use the wire glitch to get this up to the pressure plate awesome and then this is gonna go up to the hopper. Right on, okay, I don't think I need this extra conduit here. So now we can move this carpet right over to where it's gonna hide. The wire to the hopper. Pretty close. That's pretty good. I probably could even glitch it into the wall. Let me go ahead and do that. Because I can always pull these back out again. That's the cool thing about it. So I'm going to set that there. Pull that onto this rug. And now I can glitch that right in there. Hopefully that won't prevent me from adding the block back in again. And now I can line up this one right underneath the pressure plate. So the wires for that are not seen. Barely even seen. That is cool. Okay, I think we got it. All right, so that one wire coming from the switch may prevent me from adding the block in there. So I may have to glitch that back in again. I can see that happening already. So let's give it a try. No, it worked. Wow, amazing. <laughs> this one though, that's preventing me from doing it, which is not a problem because I can just pull these back out again because they're on rugs. You can slide the... Uh, <laughs> rugs right back in again after we put this uh, shack foundation in place. Bada bing. All right, so I can, geez, I can move the whole thing as a group. It's great. Okay, so all those wires are 
pretty much hidden so far. Oh, I know why I wanted that extra. Yeah, that's right. I had that extra conduit there. It was to hide the wires coming out from there. <laughs> okay, so let's do that real quick. Cool, and that's gonna be slid into the wall as well. Okay, so I'm going to rest again till we have a nice sunny day and then we're gonna test this whole thing out, all right? So hang tight. Okay guys, I am back. So let's take a look at how this uh, all turned out here. First of all, uh, the items are gonna drop out of this hopper when I step on this pressure plate, but they need something to drop into, you know, unless we just want them to drop onto the floor. Now I could use something like this bathtub, you know, there aren't a whole lot of constructible items in the workshop that are like catch-all bins, you know what I mean? There's the uh, troughs, but we don't want the Brahmin hanging out here, so. You know, the bathtub is a good solution, but to me, it looks a bit ugly. So I decided to create a custom little catch-all bin out of a couple of chairs. So I'll show you how I created that in just a second. But first of all, let's go ahead and uh, add our clear weather shells to this uh, steamer trunk so we can kind of see the process move along here. And it's going to get caught up in that pyrotechnics mill, but we'll go ahead and pull them out of there just so you can see how things are going to move. So it gets vacuum hopped out of the steamer trunk lifted up that conveyor drops onto uh, this assembly see at the perfect speed something's going to fall off the other side there and then it is going to get caught up in this pyrotechnics mill because it's not a component for making one of the clear weather shells it just is a clear weather shell so we're going to pull those back out again i'm just going to drop them right over here so we can continue the process <laughs> I'll just drop like four of them so you can see how it works. Okay, so they're gonna slide along the conveyor and drop right down into the hopper. There you go. So they vanish for a moment until we step on this pressure plate. All right, so check this out. <laughs> how cute is that? <laughs> nice, okay. And then I could just step right off of the pressure plate and that thing will close. No switch is necessary, all right? So good opportunity for me to use these things. I almost never use them, but that is a great example for it. Okay, so I'm gonna grab these uh, clear weather shells and I'll show you how I made this little uh, bin here. It's pretty simple. First, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break out a master rug like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna get out a couple of these smaller rugs. Maybe I'll use these right here. And I'm gonna set these two right here. Then we're gonna go into the furniture section, go to chairs, and I'll use the cleaner version for this example. I wanted to show you the dirty version because you know, not only can this thing be like a catch-all bin, but it could be like some kind of like blood sacrifice altar or something kind of cool. You can think of some cool things to use for it. Almost looks like a baptismal, I forget the name for it. You know, one of those baptismal bins. I'll put a pop-up for the, uh, those things have a name. But anyway, let's use the cleaner one just for the second example so we can compare them. So I can kind of slide that right to there. Slide this, whoops. Hey now. Ooh, close, that was close. That almost fell through. Okay, and then you can kind of just merge these together here. I mean, even that looks kind of cool, but I'm going to get them to where they're, you know, straight up circular. Wow, that is pretty awesome. I can probably adjust it just to make the sides look even nicer. It's 
So the junkier version hides the place where they're merged together a bit better there. But anyway, so at this point, what you'll do is just pull out this uh, master rug right here. And if you've got, you know, one of the squishy floor tiles, it should drop right into place. See, there we go. So that's how I did that. I'll go ahead and store those. All right, so that is how it's done, guys. I really appreciate it if you stuck around for the second part of this video for the invisible wiring. Unless you're going for the dirty raider look, you know, hiding the wires I think is important for making a really clean build. So that's why I wanted to take the time to do that. But uh, yeah, that is a great example of a very simple manufacturing build. It's gonna get a little, actually, you know what? <laughs> Let's use one of our clear weather shells while I'm blabbing here to uh, clear this all up. See, I have used several of those in this video now. Now you see why I wanted to create this little uh, factory for it. Anyway, I hope that helps. That's a perfect example of a very simple manufacturing build of something that I'm actually gonna use. But in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to get rich off of manufacturing. And it is a very innovative idea that I think you guys are gonna love. So make sure you hit that like button if you're excited about that. Subscribe to get these videos delivered right to your digital doorstep. And you know, share the video around. So other people who can enjoy these videos too. Thanks again for watching. See you in the next video. Happy building and class dismissed.